continuing on in our investigation of the Davenport apartment complex building collapse, I uploaded that video showing my root cause theories, and I think I'm pretty close to being correct. No sooner than I uploaded that video than this new video was released, and it shows the actual collapse happening. It was taken from the building next door of security cam. It's a short video. It's only about nine seconds, but we're going to show it first, and then I want to break it down and show it to you in super slow motion. And we are going to identify exactly where on this building did those bricks start falling first. Okay, so here's the full nine second video, and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so let's play it all the way through here. First, everything's okay, and then you can see it start to falling off, and the whole thing just slides right down. Now, to figure out where we are in the grand scheme of things, it's important to take a really close look here at how the building separated here, where the collapse occurred on this west wall. Okay, so the important thing to remember here is that it happened just to the left here of the first three windows. There was a row of three windows, and if you look real closely, I want you to pay special attention to this, as it sheared right along the windows of this fourth column. You could see see the, the right side wood frames still on the brick wall here, which is pretty amazing here. See that all the way up, all six floors. So basically you're left with just this white part of the wood frame. And remember how this building is constructed. This red here is a, what we call a veneer layer. So it's stuck onto the outside of the other layers before it. These layers of bricks behind it are likely a withe. Not really sure yet. I haven't been able to see it up close. And this is just a veneer layer. It's supposed to be a non-load bearing layer, although it is holding the window frames apparently. So just remember where it collapsed, just on that fourth column of windows. So when we look at this picture here that was taken the day of the collapse by Mr. Schaefer, he's the brick contractor that did not get the job, but he came by to warn the employees that were there that, hey, this thing's coming down. So just remember where it failed. It sheared starting right here at this point and went all the way over past the door, which I'll show you in this picture. So this was the other picture that he took. If you remember, this downspout here was left dangling. If you remember, this downspout right here was dangling. See it right here? So this downspout spout is this downspout right here. So yeah, it looks like it failed around maybe one or two windows to the left of the downspout. And again, just like I showed you before on the other side, the window frames were left right there. It sheared right along that plane where the left side of the window frame is. Why do you think it sheared there? Because the windows are the weak point in every brick wall. And so it sheared right along the edge here because now there's no more window and you're just dealing with brick. So it's a little bit stronger there. So I estimate that it probably failed right along either this window or this window but we know that we were left with the left frame still intact and here you can see more of the original bulging that was pointed out before and so uh, this whole section right here just slid right down the wall and remember this is a veneer and so this bracing that you see here as i pointed out the other night is completely 100 percent ineffective it was as if you didn't even put it there at all and then by them having this brace over here on this side it might hold this up a little bit but it's not going to hold this part here and it's not going to hold this part over here They're, they left it naked basically naked and afraid and unprotected okay before we get started i want to show you where exactly we're looking here so this right here is the door it's this glass door this is the door that leads out to the parking lot from the lobby patchy gray area right here in between the supports for lack of a better word is this area here where they had built up those CMUs, the cement blocks in here to fill up these old voids that were incorrectly filled in the first place. I believe they have lintels on the top as we look inside because that, that was supposedly what was called out by the engineer. But I don't know whether they filled in these voids fully. I mean, you need to support these arches here as well. Uh, but anyway, and then take note of this hole right here. Okay, so then that's what that gray shaded area is. And then you see this other little patched area right here. When you look at the picture that Mr. Schaefer took, it's this area of bricks right here just to the right side of the two windows that they had already filled in with the CMUs. This is the concrete masonry units right here. And here's the patch next to it, just underneath the other brace that they put in place down here. And by the way, if you look at this angle here, you can see how Mr. Schaefer captured it just perfectly to the right of this door. Look how everything is just buckling way out and you can see the gaps behind the facade. And this is what the engineer had pointed out that he saw in February and that there's a 14 inch gap back in here and bricks internally kept falling down the gap, piling up at the bottom and they're forcing the wall out. So you can see why this whole thing was buckling. 
And come on, really, you really think a couple of two by fours with just the corner of the two by four at the top up against one brick is going to brace a wall? I mean, what clown in a million years ever would have thought that this was any kind of support? You, you would have been better off saving your time and money and not putting anything at all because it had no effect. So here is the picture that the engineer showed close up. There's your interior wall over here. Here's that gap between the interior wall and the facade. And here's all the bricks that have been falling down in this gap and forcing these bricks outward, causing that external facade to buckle. And in fact, like I showed on my video the other night, here is the drawing that the engineer made showing this. So it shows how the bricks from up top are coming down, falling down there and piling up at the bottom, forcing the facade wall outward and bowing. So now looking at the video and we have our bearings now, we know where we are on that building. Now let's take a look frame by frame and try to pinpoint which bricks fell first and try to really narrow down where the actual root cause of this collapse is. Okay, I'm going to start stepping through now. Okay, so pay attention to this area right here above the gray shaded brick area, which is all of this area right in here. So I'm stepping through, stepping, now watch right here. It's gonna start to happen right up here. Right, see that very first little piece that popped in right there? So it looks like we started to see something happen right at the very top of it. So I don't know if it was the arch that caved in or what, but you see more of it coming down now. Watch right where that cursor is. See how it's starting to fall some there? And it's just coming down. It's mostly, it's either chunks of bricks or dust, but you can see it starting there and it's now sinking to the bottom. And notice that, I don't know if that's one of the other braces here or not. I think he's starting to get pushed away or buckling at this point. This is the brace that's right next to the door. See, I think it's probably this one here. It's still a little bit hard to tell from that kind of result. He's already buckling. So if he's already buckling at that point, that means this is starting to do something to it. It's starting to put a little pressure on it. See how you're seeing more starting to come down from right here. And now you're starting to see a crack open up, a big gap right here to the lower left of this window. See this right here is starting to open up right in here. This is right in that area where I had mentioned it doesn't look like we have any good amount of support there. And obviously this support right here was doing nothing. So now keep your eyes on this window. It's already continuing on and now you see a huge push out between the two windows. So these two, that's the area right here that just buckled out between those two windows. Now, as we go step by step, watch this. You're seeing more shooting out here and then it's really starting to force its way out there. So it almost says to me that something was happening behind it. Like I see, I think some of the bricks behind this facade were coming down and bunching up right in here. So that's another possibility to look at, but you can see now it's, it's just sticking out more. And at this time, did you see the entire section here? shifting all at once it's like all of a sudden it becomes an instant liquefaction kind of like during an earthquake and you'll see the entire thing start to move at once here now see look at that the whole facade layer is now sliding down you can see your supports are buckling this one here is already bending outward and it's just going to slide right down the wall there taking all the window frames with it the so window frames were attached to that outer veneer layer and look right here it's just shooting out of this window at this point and you can just see it all comes sliding down from there as we step through and then that was it that that's when their camera cut off so it looks like they first started somewhere in this area this unprotected area somewhere in here is where it actually began. Now we don't know which was the very first brick to fall or why, but once it started here, it all just seemed to be connected and we had that gap that opened up over here be at the bottom left of this window and then this part buckled out. And once you have that happening, the entire veneer is connected to that and there's nothing really supporting it up. They just did a horrible job and quite frankly, I don't even know whether or not this would have helped much there. Uh, but you can see they wanted the engineer wanted them to use these big boards with the lentil so yeah it, it it might have but would it have helped the entire building was there more stuff going on on the inside part of the wall behind these facade bricks that we didn't know about so that's the the tough part but i think had they been able to get these supports on there and get the supports under those beams 
the building itself might have survived even if the facade had fallen down. That's the killer. So I think just like with any collapse, you're going to see a multiple different contributing factors here. You're not going to see one particular smoking gun. I think you had a lot of factors that came into play here. You had the age of the building, you had the temp cycling over the years from winter to summer and the bricks expanding and contracting. You probably had improper amounts of concrete. You probably had improper tying being done between the brick layers. And then you had, of course, the, you know, the lack of the support. You had water getting behind the bricks. You had them painting that facade layer of bricks. You don't want to paint the bricks because painting seals the, those bricks. Now where's the water going to go? How's the water going to evaporate? Don't forget, your bricks are concrete and they want to breathe and evaporate and get that water out of there. And were there even any decent weeping holes anywhere? Heck, I don't even know. Just like with the ring video that we had of the Champlain Towers collapse two years ago, as you can see here, you know, that gave us some insight as to what was going on inside the building. Well, this video was certainly very helpful because it really narrowed down as to where it started falling at. But what we still don't know is how was the that whole interior structure tied to that brick wall? Or was it? Did the bricks falling inward a little bit, did that maybe just bring the structure down because the beam was already in bad shape? Well, we don't know. There was so many different types of bricks here. How do we know that these are all appropriate for use in a building like this and the structure and all that? So that will come to light too in the future. I hope this shed some light on it for you and thank you so much for joining us today, folks. And we'll see all of you on the next one.